In this question, we have quite an abundance of points and line segments. If we were short on time in the quantitative section and solve this question, we could glance at this, punch in a D, and move on because there's a lot of information here, and therefore, this question will tend towards sufficiency. One thing to keep in mind on that note is that it's a perfectly fine habit to work on mastering every question, considering variations, meditating on confusing points, and so on. But keep in mind that on test day, guessing at proper times is the practice of people who score 700 plus and even 760 plus on the GMAT. Anyway, in this question, we want the area of the circle and the area of the square so that we can find the difference. The radius of the circle and the side of a length of the square will get us to that point. The circle is centered on D, so BD or DF would give us the radius and hence the area of the circle for one thing. Let's turn to the data statements separately first. Statement one allows us to conclude that AC is 10. And since point C bisects AF, we know that AF equals 20 and the area of the square is 400. That leaves the question of whether we can determine the radius of the circle. Indeed, if AF is 20, and from statement 1, AB is 6, then the diameter of the circle is 14. We are able to determine the area of the circle, and we will be able to answer the question definitively, so statement 1 is sufficient. Statement 2 is somewhat like the information of statement 1 backwards. EF is half a radius, so it allows us to determine the radius of the circle. And that means that we have BF, the diameter. And with BF, along with the measure of AB, which is given to us by statement 2, we know the measure of a side of the square. Therefore, statement 2 also is sufficient. The correct answer is D.